After more than 10 years of campaign by Human Rights Watch, the first international arms trade treaty has become a reality. This treaty seeks to legitimize uh, that a weapon must be in, in, in good hands and a weapon has to be brought above the table so that then the UN and other groups which are interested in the trade of small arms and all that then would be able to track weapon to weapon. You know, I mean, if you look at Kenya itself, uh, uh, um, I mean, how have terrorists been able to, to hit us by the end of the day? Do they travel into the country with these weapons or they get these weapons locally and they're able to use them? Those are key questions, uh, you know, that we need to ask ourselves. And by the end of the day, where do they access these uh, military uh, weapons from? So, I mean, the illicit trade of small arms and, and, and light weapons is, is, is huge business. The next step is to make sure it is properly implemented to reduce the human cost associated with the uncontrolled trade in conventional weapons and ammunition. If the act is implemented effectively, it will help transform the way the arms trade operates. The treaty will help shine the spotlight on the end user of any firearm holder. It will no longer be acceptable to look the other way when arms are transferred to regime that will use them to harm innocent people and violate their human rights. So how does the International Arms Trade Treaty work? Uh, Under the new rules in the act, before any arms transfer takes place, the supplier government must access the related risk of the deal against strict criteria, including whether the arms might be used for human rights violation or war crimes. If there is a substantial risk of this happening, the deal cannot be authorized by the seller. Uh, you know, by the end of the day, I think Africa ought to, and, and you know, it, it needs to be mandatory, uh, ought to sign and ratify uh, uh, that treaty. Because by the end of the day, we're going to be able to reduce part of the conflict in Africa. And we're going also to be able to kill some of these radical groups and organizations that are coming up in Africa, which, and they're be very, very much hurting. As you know, you're looking at Boko Haram's, you're looking at uh, Al Qaeda associations and, and all of these people, you know, that are undermining peace in Africa. And not just undermining peace, taking our resources by, by you know, by force. And because there's nobody who can still, who can undermine a government if they're not properly armed and if, if they don't know uh, how to go about illegal trade of arms. The fact that the US, China, India and Russia have not signed the treaty, despite being the biggest exporters of firearms, the treaty still has an enormous value. Uh, uh, registered arms holders in the world, they consist of about 56% uh, of, 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 of uh, small weapons in the world. The rest are in the wrong hands. So I mean that's a huge percentage. That even, even if you're looking at this country, you know, there are probably more wrong guns in the country than, than, than right guns. The International Arms Trade.